Welcome to Walking with Jesus. This is episode 61. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mark chapter 13, verses 9 through 13. This is part two of talking about the end times. All right, let's dive right in. When these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the local councils and beaten in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. For the good news must first be preached to all nations. But when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you at that time. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. So I know that a lot of people are very interested in this topic of the end times. There's all kinds of Bible studies on this. People have um, developed, you know, a lot of books and a lot of study materials. Uh, you can go online and find all kinds of charts and graphs that explain this. And, um, you know, very famous book series have been written, like the Left Behind series and different things. This is a very, very difficult subject to wade through because there are so many different views. You've probably heard different terms like um, amillennial or premillennial, postmillennial. You've probably heard terms like rapture. Um, and then there's pre-tribulation rapture, mid-tribulation rapture, post-tribulation rapture. All of these different theological constructs built around this idea of the end times. Now, I encourage you to study some of those things out for yourself. For the purposes of us walking through this, we just want to take the text at face value for what it says. Jesus is explaining to his disciples what it's going to look like before he returns. Now, you would have thought that this would have tri triggered them to realize that this was not the only time he was coming, but yet they were still blinded by their own misperceptions because of the things that they believed about the Messiah. And so, as Jesus is explaining these things to them, they're, they're truly not having revelation or understanding. I personally believe that when Jesus does return in His glorious appearing, that there are going to be a lot of people who are surprised by how it happens. And I'm not sure that there's anyone out there right now who's going to be 100% correct in what they believed was going to unfold. You know, this is part of the mystery of God. Jesus tells us that even His return, his, that, sorry, that His return is even shielded to Him to an extent that only the Father knows the day and the hour. So if the details are not even fully known to Jesus, how can we presume to be able to walk around and tell people definitively how things are going to look? I think what matters most is that we be prepared in our heart and that we be living lives every single day that are ready for when Jesus comes back for his bride. So let's break this down for a few minutes. Jesus says, when these things happen, you are going to be handed over to the government, basically. Um, this might be locally, it might be on a state level, it might be on a national level, but followers of Jesus are going to be handed over to Jesus. Now, is this simply going to be because um, they declare themselves to be Christians? Is, is persecution going to be built solely on the reality of allegiance to Christ. Well, maybe. If, uh, if the Antichrist or if this, if this one world dictator or leader is in power, that, that could definitely happen, that anybody who proclaims to be a follower of Jesus uh, would face this level of persecution. However, I think that the persecution is going to come because of what followers of Jesus believe. And uh, I'll be honest, a few years ago, I had a hard time wrapping my head around how this could actually happen, of, of seeing people betray each other to this level, this level of, of hatred and betrayal and really just complete fear 
rising up in people's hearts to the point that they were willing to throw the people that they loved the most under the bus, that, that people would give their allegiance to something so completely that they had total disregard for the people around them. But then COVID happened. And since COVID has been going on the last two years, we have really seen evidence that people, it, whether it be in the name of their own safety or their own comfort, are really willing to go to great lengths to protect themselves and to, uh, to look out for, for themselves and, and usually in the name of looking out for other people. But we have, we've seen evidence of people being willing to, to uh, scream and shout and, and, and just you know all kinds of hatred of, over things like masks and vaccines. You know, people aren't allowed to disagree on these topics anymore. We're not allowed to have um, debate where we actually get into the, the evidence and talk about the information. Everything is so based on feelings now and fear is propagated minute by minute by our media. Minute by minute, the government is using fear, you know, in a way to really get us to get into alignment to the point to where our own president is saying that he's losing patience with us and basically that he's not going to put up with anybody who's not getting in line and following orders. And other people say that's absolutely fine because, you know, we have this vaccine. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't everybody want to get it? Why shouldn't we force people to get it so that everybody is safe? I don't want to go down too far down that rabbit trail. But what I am saying is what COVID has shown us is that what Jesus is predicting here could happen very easily because we don't know what it is that the Christians at the time that this happens are going to have solidarity behind. We don't know what kind of government edict. Um, we don't know what, what kind of national crisis or emergency Christians are going to stand up against and say, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to bend the knee. We're not going to show allegiance to anyone other than to Jesus. And it's going to cause people to start, like this says, being arrested. You know, we know right now that if you use certain verses out of the Bible in Canada, you can go to prison for hate speech, just for reading out of the Bible. And that's not only there, they tried to do that here in the United States a couple years ago. I remember down in Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas had created a panel and they were telling all local pastors that they needed to submit their sermons to be reviewed by this panel so that they could determine whether or not it had hate speech in it. I mean, that's terrifying stuff. That's a complete violation of, of First Amendment rights. I mean, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. And yet we are seeing these things begin to creep in here within our own country. And it's always under this guise of trying to protect other people, trying to look out for other people's interests, when in reality, it's just people wanting to be in control and wanting to shut down any opposing view or thought or idea. So Jesus says, you're going to be handed over. And uh, not only are you going to be handed over, some people, you're going to face some physical difficulty. People are going to be beaten. They're going to be tortured. They're going to, they're going to be hurt. And then they're going to go before um, political figures. They're going to go before governors. They're going to go before kings just because they're my followers. But Jesus says, but that's actually an opportunity because in these end times, when people face persecution, when they are arrested, well, that's the opportunity to begin to share the truth. So Jesus is going to use these difficult and sometimes painful experiences to be a gateway for the gospel to go forward, for the kingdom to be able to be proclaimed in secular arenas. You know, the separation of church and state at this time is probably going to be almost absolute. But yet, Jesus is going to break down those walls of the separation of church and state because his followers, even though they've been arrested, even though they're in prison, they're going to have the opportunity to proclaim the gospel to their guards, to their captors, and even to those who are in power. I mean, we read about the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts. Well, we're going to have a lot of Apostle Pauls running around 
being able to proclaim Jesus when these things happen. But then look what he says. He says, the good news must be spoken throughout all the nations. And then he says, when you are arrested, not if, not if this should happen to you, but kind of, you know what, in these last times, you should expect things to be difficult. And I think that this is a reality that for us followers of Jesus, we have to be willing to accept and not be afraid of. Trouble's going to come. Jesus says in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Persecution follows believers. And the more ardent and the more um, powerfully we hang on to our faith and we, we hang on to Jesus, the enemy doesn't like that. And the enemy will go to any length he can to shut that down and to destroy us. But Jesus says, you don't have to stress out about what to say. When you find yourself in a situation where the enemy is coming against you and you need to be able to give a reason for what you believe or you need to be able to offer evidence of, of the things that you're doing in the name of Christ, the Holy Spirit will give you the words. Don't try to come up with every answer on your own. Don't, don't try to come up with these perfectly logical solutions because guess what? The world we live in today, it's not based in logic. People don't care about facts. They're not interested in evidence. The only evidence that matters is anecdotal. And what I mean by anecdotal is they're gonna hear a story that happened to some random person, and that's gonna convince them that that's the reality across the board. I mean, that's how the media tells every story today. They will try to find the worst possible example of something, and then they will use that to say that that is the norm in culture and in society, and then they begin to place these negative labels on things and they begin to use the term systemic, saying that it's everywhere, that it's broad, that it's the only thing going on. And the reason that they're doing that is because they, they are sowing division, they're sowing fear, because it's only within division and fear that you can grab hold of power and convince people that you have the answer to what everybody else needs. And then Jesus says, in this same chaotic time, family members are going to turn on each other. Brothers are going to betray their brothers. Parents are going to betray their children. Children are going to rebel against their parents and have them put to death. And we think to ourselves, how in the world could that happen? Well, here we go, here we go again. Look at what's happened over the last two years. I, I know people in our church whose children have stopped talking to them because they're so fearful and they've bought into so many different things that they can't even begin to entertain any other realities other than what they've believed, that they're just, death is right around the corner all the time. And that if they don't live in constant fear, if they don't perpetuate this ongoing cycle of distrust and always being on their guard that something horrible is going to happen to them, even though statistically they're the safest people in society. The enemy uses these things to, to get us to fight against each other, to make us suspicious against one another, and then ultimately, if the enemy can convince us that other people are the enemy by their actions, by their thoughts, by their words, then he can get us so riled up against them that we are willing to get them out of the way. We stop thinking about them as people. We stop thinking about them as family. And we simply see them as the enemy. And the enemy needs to be removed. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be very hard to see these things actually fulfilled the way that the Bible says that they're going to be fulfilled. The enemy is going to have a heyday because he's going to operate off of people's fears and he's going to get into people's minds. So what do we do about that? We get into the Word, we trust the Holy Spirit, and we cling to the truth, and we don't listen to everything that is being said around us. We listen to the voice of God. Would you pray with me? Lord, we realize that we don't understand everything uh, about the end times, and I and I pray that you would give us revelation and understanding about them. But I also pray, Lord, that you would help us to cling to the truth of your word. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. And help us, Lord, to keep our eyes 
on your kingdom, on your values, and on the absolutes found within your word. Help us, Jesus, to always be ready, and help us, Lord, to live prepared for your return. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, I hope